I believe as an educator that interesting questions is what gets you out of bed in the morning. It makes you look for new tools. It makes you work hard because you want to know that how the world works. When we first saw our first data set and LiDAR, the topography of the Earth at the scale at which processes operate was truly revolution. I could just imagine what my predecessors in the turn of the century, what they would have done <laughs> with such information. ANICOM is a research center funded by National Science Foundation, and it provides research quality LiDAR data for the scientific community at large. LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. It is a method of using lasers to uh, produce 3D maps of the topography. You have an airplane, a light aircraft, has three lasers in it. Each of those lasers puts out 300,000 pulses a second. So you're flying over the country now collecting 900,000 pulses a second. It's sort of like mowing the lawn. As the plane flies, it's sending this light out and it's hitting the surface and returning, and so we get all these returns. This sampling then is really rich. It lets us characterize the topography, the structures, vegetation, kind of really unprecedented level of detail but also over long expanses. So being able to have a field site that you know you really want to study and then having NCOM quickly go out and collect that data for you is pretty invaluable. We've done sites now in the rainforest in Central America where the archaeologists have been on the ground 30 years and they had only mapped a small fraction of what we did in three days. In terms of the, the use of NCOM technology, majority of our projects are looking at structures on the surface of the earth. Every month or so we have a new person that comes to us with a new application. Had people coming to us looking and saying, well, can't you map these fault lines for us? And uh, I want to look at the damage done by a forest fire. We have people that want to take the system to places like the Arctic and the Antarctic because of the global warming. The huge project we did in Honduras was to go into an area where there was supposedly the legend said that the people had lived. And we found two cities. National Geographic has just done an article on it, and the crew is going in to, to look at the artifacts and, and start to dig them. Well, I use LiDAR on my project to understand how quickly Antarctica is changing, where and why. You need to understand the surface of the Earth and how it's changing, and you need to know on a, on a quick time scale, at high resolution, NCOM is your, your solution. I think it's sort of globally recognized as a leader in academic, high quality topographic data and associated research. There are other technologies that we're developing, for example, it's called the INSAR. So our ultimate goal is to make this airborne INSAR system operational as the existing LiDAR system in NCOM in order to better understand the behavior of uh, different several natural hazards. That will then give us 24-7 anywhere capability to go and collect data, produce topographic information. Houston is devoted to education and technology. The uh, Geoscience System Engineering Research Program provides the graduate degree uh, at the University of Houston, both masters, PhDs, and now we're working on undergraduate also. The students that are in this program do not normally come from a LIDAR background. The idea is if they have the fundamental science and math backgrounds, we'll be able to teach them the other pieces of that to, to be able to build the 3D models. What interested me in the GSS program was the ability to do research immediately, which was important to me because there are a number of other schools where they didn't have as much funding for their graduate students, and so you just went and you took classes but here I was able to research right away. They are also from different uh, principal studies from geology and the geoscience and even mechanical engineering. The presence of NCOLM here was a big deal to me because I was interested in LIDAR and there was a national NSF funded center which immediately lent some prestige and also I knew I would have access to a lot of data and sensors that I wouldn't get anywhere else. We partner with University of California Berkeley because they are very, very good the science component of what they do. In a way, this kind of a, this data explosion is also recruiting a new generation of explorers. When I was a grad student, I got a seed grant, and so it was really nice that I got this very, very nice, high-quality data set. I think the unique thing about NCOM is the experience and the skill of the people we have in the center. An individual or a group of individuals wanting to learn about a place and being able to ask for data about that place at a research grade, then being able to use that data, publish it, and importantly, that data become freely available. NCOM is unique in the planet.